It's a brand new day. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Samuel Perez and thank you so much for clicking on my video. So today we are going to be doing shoulders and traps. But before we get into that, I do have some stuff that I want to share that's been on my heart. So as you guys know, I have been a pastor of an online church community. Maybe you don't know, but I've been an online church pastor in a community for <laughs> I think a year now. And one of the most frustrating things I would say about that is just the amount of people that go in and out of this ministry. I think sometimes we need to be reminded just how much we should appreciate people who are in ministry, who are pastors. I think honestly, like I'm not, I'm not jumping on here to be like, I don't like what I do or like, I don't feel appreciated. But honestly, sometimes as a minister and as a pastor, like I don't feel appreciated. And I just saw this article that came out on Facebook that said something around like being a pastor is has been voted as one of the hardest professions in the entire world because you have to be a counselor, you have to be a psychologist, you have to be, you know, chasing after people, you have to be an event organizer, you have to like, you know, be a fundraiser. There's so many aspects of being in ministry and being a pastor specifically that you have to do and the amount of like money that's poured into it and appreciation is not much like at all anybody that gets into ministry because they want to make money good luck with that you're in for a nice little treat there but i think it just wouldn't hit me as hard if you know some of the circumstances that i've been through if people didn't just come into the ministry take all of the resources that we have to offer take all of our help take all of our love and then just leave but then on top of just like taking all of our resources and energy and then being part of this community for five months or three months they leave not only do they leave but they also go behind our backs to start talking about the horrible experiences that they had within the ministries and i know that this is not something that is like personal to to me like we haven't had a ton of people that have done this specific thing but there have been a couple of times where not only have they left and used up <laughs> And depleted our, our resources because there's only so much energy that we as human beings have there's so much only so much love that we can give love with our time love with our money love with our energy but then they go behind our backs to talk about other people about the problems that they had with us instead of just confronting us and talking to us about the problems that they had and the reason that they do that is because they know that if they come to us they're in the wrong and a lot of the issues that they have don't come from the people that they were involved with in ministry, but it comes from within the roots of the problems that they have themselves. So it's just been really frustrating. I mean, sometimes it's like you wake up and you're like, I love what I do and this is amazing. And then sometimes it's just like, you just want to give up. You just want to say, no, I don't, I don't want to keep helping people like this. And, and it just sucks. But then you do have those individuals who do come into the church or come into the community and they listen, they deal with their problems, they're super submissive and submissive to God, most importantly, and their lives change for the better. And then you look at the before and then you look at the after and you see that their whole entire life trajectory has just changed because of their involvement in a ministry or a community. And then that's what makes it worth it. I look at those people's lives and I'm like, oh my gosh, like, this is amazing. Like, my ministry has been able to really help transform a lot of people's lives. So even though it didn't work on some individuals and they go behind our backs and start talking bad about us, it does work for other individuals. So then you kind of have to look and see, like, why did it work for them and it didn't work for, for that person? And I think that goes into just, once again, the person not dealing with the internal issues that they're facing but don't be that kind of person. If you are in a ministry and you have a pastor and you're part of a community, show that pastor some love. Just give him a gift, just like a random gift. It doesn't have to be his birthday for you to like tell that person that you love them and that you appreciate them. Like as a pastor, I go through so much and I'm like, dog, like I feel so underappreciated sometimes. And something that would just be helpful, someone just like got me like a, like a t-shirt. Or like the other day, my friend, she came over to my house and she brought me some candies. And I was just like, I felt so appreciated in that moment because even just something as simple as like a lollipop can really help me feel more appreciated in the ministry and within the community. 
based on some of the things that I do. So don't be that person that just has a fence in their heart and don't be that person that just walks away from a ministry and never thanks anyone, doesn't keep communication with anyone. You never check back in with those, those people who are giving their whole lives to try to serve God. If someone has given their life to serve the Lord and the least that you can do is show them how much you care about them and how much you appreciate the time that they gave to you. So I don't think it's like National Appreciate Pastor Day, but if you can think of somebody that's helped you in your faith and that has helped you grow closer to God, and if you ask yourself the question, does this person know how much I appreciate them? And you're kind of like, I don't know. I don't know if they know. Then do something big for this individual, like go and get them a present, send them a text, you know. Uh, I would say do more than just a text, you know, like, like, put your words into actions you know if they need someone to help clean their house go and clean their house for them you know let's say you don't have money so like you have time you know do something for that person in ministry that has been working tirelessly to serve god's people because let me tell you it is a job that goes so underappreciated so many times there's so many ministers that are struggling and their whole job is to try to help others who are struggling so they're not going to reach out and say hey I'm really struggling and I, I, I don't feel appreciated right now. Like they're not going to turn to the people that they're shepherding to do that. So if the Lord puts it on your heart and he puts a name of an individual that has been helping you in your life, go and do that for that person. Ministry is not easy, guys. Being a pastor is not easy. Uh, and one day, one of you guys are eventually going to have to make disciples of your own and be in leadership in some form. What you sow is going to be what you reap. And so if you were a good person to be led by and you did incredible pe incredible things to people around you and you showed them appreciation, then you're also going to get that appreciation when you start leading people to knowing who Jesus is. But let's get the workout started, guys. I don't want to take up any more time. All right, so I'm wearing an oversized shirt today to the gym only because I felt kind of fat, not even going to lie. I think it was the lack of cardio that I did yesterday. <laughs> I ended up taking my scooter to meet my friend, and so I didn't do as much cardio as I thought I was gonna do. Um, but I've still been eating right every single day, and so I just didn't wanna wear the tightest shirt today, so I just got this hamburger shirt, because I like burgers. So if you guys ever see any type of burger merchandise, send it to me, because I'm obsessed with cheeseburgers. I've got a bunch of cheeseburgers all over my office studio, if you guys have ever noticed. And I really want one of those cheeseburger backpacks from TikTok that I've seen. Anyways, all right, we're gonna get started with some lateral front raises, or is it, I'm sorry, front raises and then some lateral raises uh, with the dumbbell. And so let's try to do 35 pounds. And it's really cold today. Even the dumbbells are, are cold here. All right, okay, everybody ready? Let's go. One, two, oh, I should have warmed up. Three, even though I did do 30 minutes of cardio. Four, 11, 12. I, think I, I still have to do some stretches on my arms because I don't think I, I think I skipped stretches on the top half of my body. Ooh, I feel lightheaded already. All right, okay, I finished up my front raises. I did 35 pounds. Now we're gonna do lateral raises, 35 pounds. I used to superset these, but I don't do that anymore. <laughs> One, two, three, 10, 11. And 12. Whew. There's a window right outside here and I saw the cutest dog being walked. I wish I had a dog. I really want a Shiba. This would be really cute. Okay, now we're gonna do this deltoid raise machine. Um, I'm gonna set it at 80 pounds. Is that 70? I always get, I always get mixed up with the, with the numbers. And let's see how that feels. I'm gonna do one set. Uh, yeah, that's pretty good. I, I think I could even do 90, 90 pounds. There we go. So I was going to plan on doing meal preps today, but it's Thursday and uh, I got to do my Bible study. And so I want time to do meal preps and the study. And I still got to go to Whole Foods. So tomorrow I'm going to try to f film doing some chicken. And, uh, and I think I have to go to BJ's or Costco for the chicken. Um, so today I'll just cook some steak for myself at night. Uh, I won't film that because I don't know how good I am at that. Even though it seems to be like you guys like seeing me cook, even though it's not good. <laughs> I gotta, 
I definitely got to make chicken for the upcoming week. So one, two, because I'm all out. Three, four, 10, 11, and 12. Oh. All right, that's targeting this area. <laughs> Shoulders. And, and you guys already know I'm going to do that for three reps. I'm sorry, three sets, 12 reps. All right, okay, so we're here at the shoulder press machine. I have actually started with 45 and 25, but then I went up, and then I've gone up again. So it's 245 plates, my lucky number. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna do this to see if I can actually get it done for 12 reps. And if not, that's okay too. One, two, three, four, 10, 11, 12. Ah. I have to be, be really careful with the uh, shoulder because I had that injury that happened to me last year. And so that was a freak accident where I think I, I tore something in my shoulder, but it, it was like a, like a mini tear. It wasn't anything too bad. And so, um, and it was during an incline chest press and nothing to do with shoulders, but I'm scared that it's just going to give out on me like it did last time. I went, I was like lifting it up and it went Kick! and I thought I was dying. But yeah, we don't want a repetition of that. All right, uh, I think that was my last set. So we're gonna move on to the next exercise. All right, okay, so we're gonna do some dumbbell shrugs here. Uh, I can usually do a lot of weight here with this one. So I'm doing 80 pounds. And you're just gonna shrug. One, two, three. Try to straighten your back out. Four, five, 14. 15, I like to do 20 of these. 16, 17, 20. It's like a small little muscle. I don't really do a ton for the traps. So that's why I do 20 reps, targets, targets it a lot more, probably. Okay, so I saw this on TikTok. I'm not really sure if it works or not, but you get one of these like, like I don't know, I call this like back row, back row attachment. <laughs> Cause that's what I use it for. And then you just, you go up like that, one, two. I definitely do feel it in my shoulders. Three, I guess it's for front delt. Four, kind of keep it fresh for you guys, you know. Seven, seven, 12. Oh yeah, I definitely felt that. That was 44 pounds there. So I don't like to do the same exercises over and over again, but there's only so much you can do sometimes. And so this is very similar to the uh, the stick that I usually use, bringing it up like that, just like a like a straight stick, but I guess just a different attachment. So, but I feel that one a lot more than than I do with the with the stick one. I actually really enjoyed that workout over there. I it was pretty good. You know, I'm glad that I saw that on TikTok. <laughs> I'm gonna be looking up even more creative ways of doing more exercises on TikTok. But that just randomly came up. I wasn't even looking for it but uh, it came in clutch for the shoulder workouts. All right, so who is excited for the weekend? I know that I am. I feel like I've got so much stuff planned. I looked up a ton of events to do this weekend. There's a convention that's happening with vintage items. I think I have to go visit a friend out in the middle of Pennsylvania. Uh, there's a comedy night on Friday. So I just got a bunch of different little events planned for this weekend. And that'll be my self-care because I haven't had a moment to just breathe lately. Just been go, go, go. Lots of work to be done. But yeah, <laughs> I am very excited for the weekend for sure. Here we are on the ab machine. I'm going to do 185 pounds and just do 25, 25 reps for four sets. One, two, three. And I'm sore because I was doing some leg races the other day. Six, 22, 23, 24, 25. And hopefully I build some definition with my abs because I don't have any definition in my abs. I've been doing this machine now for like three weeks. And so with the leg raises and with this, I should see some definition, hopefully. But then again, I've never really had, I mean, I, I have like the top four packs, but I don't have anything under that. So Lisa can have some more, <laughs> maybe one day. All right, y'all, so my video did not record the audio. And so I'm going to try to attempt to figure out what the heck I'm talking about here. 
it looks like I may be talking a little bit about abs and then maybe some hiking because of my arm movements, but I'm not really too sure here. However, this is the most important part of the video where I tell you guys how the workout went. And this was probably a very weak workout. Um, it didn't seem like a very hard <laughs> core workout, <laughs> looking back on it. So I would say it's a six out of a 10 here. Um, but overall, pretty good. Uh, this was the second clip in which the audio did not record, so you guys didn't see another workout that I did. But this is the end of the video, so don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and check out my website. I love you all. Have a great day. God bless you. Bye.